Okay, look, I meant to get this one to you guys yesterday, but I couldn't, so I had to move the review to today. But you know what? Sometimes it's better late than never. Anyways, yeah, I just got back from seeing the new and final film in the X-Men Fox series. X-Men Dark Phoenix, or just Dark Phoenix, as this is, as that's what they've been calling it lately which is also the directorial debut of longtime X-Men writer Simon Kimberg, and is also a reboot, sort of, of the third film in the, in the original X-Men series, X-Men The Last Stand, which, personally, I don't think was as bad as many people may say it is. And even though I do agree with the fact that this film, which supposedly is supposed to take place before the first few X-Men movies, again messes with the timeline of the franchise. But, you know what? I've grown used to it. So yeah, I was hoping that this film could be good in some respects. And was it? Well, while I wouldn't say it was a bad movie, I can't really call it a good one either. In fact, this is another movie that I have tons of mixed feelings on that I'm not even sure what to give it, what kind of rating to give it at the end. The first time this happened with me was last year with a movie called Pacific Rim Uprising. I had many mixed feelings about it. It wasn't a terrible movie, but it wasn't a great one either. And I couldn't even give it a score because I wasn't sure on how to declare it. Dark Phoenix is like that too. So first off, what I liked about the movie. For what I liked about the movie, I will give major props to the main cast, for the most part. Not, and not just James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender, but also Sophie Turner, Ty Sheridan, Cody Smith-McPhee, Nicholas Holt, and Alexander Shipp. They all did a great job in this movie, and quite a few scenes really show that. Like, there's this one really great conversation between Charles Xavier and Hank McCoy. It's not very long, but it was a really deep and investing moment, which benefited from some great acting from McAvoy and Holt. It was really great. Also, it was just really great to hear Hans Zimmer come back to the superhero genre. And yeah, his score in this movie is really good. It had a really unique tune to it and was really beautifully composed. It was great to see him come back, and I can't wait to see him expand his return in Wonder Woman 84. Also, yeah, I enjoyed most of the action set pieces. The best ones being two. One that takes place at this neighborhood that goes on between Gene and the X-Men, and also one that happens near the end of the movie that takes place on a train. It wasn't an adrenaline pumping sequence or anything, but it was a really fun sequence and was easily the best part of the whole movie. Now as for what I didn't like, well first off, Jessica Chastain's villain character who's like this evil manipulative Morgana type character for Gene to keep on doing these terrible things. And it was just totally throwaway and just very much so disposable. Not to mention how bland and dull her performance was. Yeah, out of this whole cast, I say she was the worst actor in this movie. She shows absolutely no emotion whatsoever, and I'm actually sure that this may have been intentional by the director, because her character is supposed to be like this non-human being entity, but surely non-human entities can show expressions too. That shouldn't be an excuse to give the actor no real direction. But, but yeah, Jessica Chastain's performance in this movie was horribly handled, and I hope she redeems herself in the upcoming IT Chapter 2. Also, this is kind of a minor thing, but I just want to say this. Scott, Cyclops, alright, he has a line in this movie that's supposed to be him, like, acting really edgy and tough and intimidating towards another character. But when he said this, me, my mom, and the whole audience just let out a big laugh. It just came off as really funny. Also, before I say this next thing, I gotta say this. Look, even though I do completely admit to enjoying The Last Stand, I will admit that I wish the Phoenix Force in that film could have been handled way better. But honestly, after seeing this film, I think I've had a change of heart about the Phoenix Force in that movie. Why? Because the Phoenix Force in this movie was really just some cool looking easy to trigger rage filled rage quit that honestly didn't really pose that much of a threat in the end. I mean, earlier it kinda did to the rest of the X-Men, but after that, you'd expect it to also show a threat to the whole planet or even the universe, right? But it doesn't. In The Last Stand, while the Phoenix Force wasn't as comic accurate as I'm sure a lot of people would have wanted it to have been, at the very least, 
what Brett Ratner did with the Phoenix Force in that movie was that he actually knew to have it pose a threat to more than just the X-Men in the end. Like, it also posed a threat to the Brotherhood of Mutants and even humankind. In this movie, it just kind of starts off as a threat to the X-Men, but soon after that, it loses any threatening vibes it ever had. It was really disappointing. Now, there is one more issue I really want to talk about, and to be honest, is the one thing about this movie that actually did make me legitimately, legitimately upset and angry. However, it's a spoiler issue, so I can't really talk about it right here. And I'm just going to have to end the review right here. So, yeah, Dark Phoenix was definitely not the train wreck people were saying it was going to be. But at the same time, it, could, it just could not deliver enough on Simon Kimberg's promise that it would be an epic finale to this series of X-Men movies. Again, I have no real clue on what to rate it. The best way I can describe it is like this. Imagine if you were given a bag of bananas, and it has a good amount of all yellow and perfectly clear bananas that are fully worth eating. But, on the other hand, it also has a big amount of terrible black-spotted over-ready bananas. There are bananas in the bag you'd absolutely eat, and some in the bag that you would absolutely refuse to eat. That's the best way I can describe X-Men Dark Phoenix. It was both a watchable film, but it was also a very t disappointing finale to a film franchise. This franchise deserved better. And this is coming from someone who didn't hate the Game of Thrones finale. Yes, I said that. Well, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I'll see you next time, and uh... Yeah, peace out.